This is uh, episode one of the my conversion of a 2017 Mustang to all-wheel drive. You can actually see it in the background there. Uh, it's a, they said it's a 2017 GTE stick, um, obviously original MT82 transmission, it, um, performance pack one, so it's got the big brakes and the Torsen 373 gears. Um, that was important to me mostly because of the gear ratio for all-wheel drive conversion. We can get into that later. Um, and it is a premium, so it's got leather, heated, cool seats, navigation, stuff like that. Um, it actually is not fully contented on purpose. It doesn't have a sunroof um, and a few other features like that, which I didn't want, actually. Um, I bought the car in the fall of 2019 for the sole purpose of doing this conversion. I've been planning this for many years. Um, I've already made another all-wheel drive car, an 86 uh, Mercure XR4 Ti, um, which I can make some more, a video about if there's interest. Um, that car is also a stick um, all-wheel drive turbo car, small block Ford. Um, about 650 horsepower based on its quarter mile times. So the basic mission with this project was to take all I've learned from that project and do a much you know newer, better job, um, variable torque split, um, smoother, quieter, not you know have less of a race car. I guess that car kind of turned into more of a race car. And the goal with this one is you'd never know it's all wheel drive from the outside. And um, you know, nice interior AC, cruise, quiet, smooth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, well, why make an all-wheel drive Mustang? Why don't you buy something all-wheel drive? Well, I'm an all-wheel drive fanatic in general, and, and I'm also a Ford guy and a Mustang guy. And and um, once you've driven an all-wheel drive V8 car, especially like a, you know some kind of forced induction car, and can feel the adrenaline rush of the acceleration and just complete effortless acceleration of all-wheel drive no matter what the conditions are it's really addicting so um, I wanted to take that and um, apply it to you know an American muscle car right and I thought about other projects I thought about maybe they obviously make all-wheel drive uh, challengers and I thought you know or chargers you could put the stuff in a challenger um, but it all comes down to, I ended up, I'm a Ford guy, and I wanted to do a Mustang. So like I said, the Mustang I bought is a 17. I purposely didn't buy the nicest one I could find on the planet. Um, I'm in Minnesota. I had it shipped in from Michigan. It has seen a couple winners. Um, but, and it's got, well, 75,000 miles on it now. It was 60-something when I bought it. But I figured, well, if this whole project somehow goes horribly south, um, you know, I didn't want to spend forty, fifty thousand dollars and start cutting up the car. Um, you'll see in some newer videos, my next videos, that I've already cut up the car. Right, the floor, there's a big hole in the floor, and and um, you know, it's a little scary. But um, anyways, um, this first video, um, I'll cover the transmission and the transfer case, and then I'll do another video on my plans for the front uh, differential. And the um, and the spindles. Um, I said I've had the car almost two years now, um, and I've had it up, and I've had the front cross member out. And I've had the the differential mocked up in the car already, um, and done a lot of work actually, more of a conceptual side of things. And now I'm in full steam ahead in execution, and I'm focusing on the transmission right now, and the transfer case. And then we'll get back to the front diff and the spindles um, with the goal of getting it on the wheels in all-wheel drive mode this summer here. Um, summer of 2022 uh, is currently January. And so at about six months, I'm hoping it I'm going to be faster than that. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. These things don't always go as smooth as you'd like. Um, okay, so now we'll get into the current plan for the transmission. This is the basic setup for the transmission. Actually started out as a used uh, Dodge uh, Challenger uh, transmission just so I could get the case and etc. Cetera, et cetera. It was a good price basically. Um, since swapped it to a 
Magnum XL front cover so I can get the um, normal bolt-on uh, throwout bearing. It then has a C5, C6 style Corvette tail housing on it which normally doesn't actually fit a, you know, a TR6060 um, but this exact one here has, has been modified for by Texas Drivetrain Performance to work with a TR6060 um, so that bolts directly to the back and uh, so that bolts directly to the back here's the actual TR6060 style tail, tail housing from a Corvette and as you can see it's dramatically bigger and taller and really doesn't work at all the top ears interfere with everything basically um, it, will, it will have an external shifter so using the normal GT500 style shifter I am then machining a adapter which this is a 3d printed representation of it will actually be thinner than this I've since done a better design but basically um, an adapter between the Corvette tail housing and the transfer case I'll talk about here in a second so basically this bolts on there and is an ad adapter which then this transfer case fits on. Now this is a Borg Warner 4440 from a V8 uh, Dodge Charger and I will, um, why have I selected this transfer case? Well a couple of reasons. Um, I wanted the, all, the drive shaft to be on the right side of the car or the passenger side um, so that any bump in the floor would be on the passenger side and not affect the pedals and everything else on the driver's side of the car. Uh, it also gets the diff on the right side of the car and away from the steering shaft, etc., etc. I also wanted a, a variable torque split transfer case, one that basically could be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And that's what this is. You can see here, it's just got a simple two wire PWM control. I'll probably make a whole separate video of how the inside of this thing works but it's very cool um, it's basically a clutch um, that's electromagnetic operates similar to the R35 GTRs actually well I shouldn't say similar it, it operates exactly like the R35 GTRs um, in the sense of how it um, electromagnetically engages the clutch um, so how am I going to interface the shafts so basically the V8 versions of this bell housing of this excuse me of this transfer case use this adapter um, that goes into this spline here as you can see and on the inside of it is a metric one module 30 spline um, spline and this is a GT500 TR6060 main shaft and it just so happens to work out that this section here which is normally not used will be exactly where the spline needs to be to fit that on there basically which is lucky and then there also will be this smooth area here will work out perfect for putting a seal in the back of the Corvette tail house and make the whole thing seal off um, I'm going to do the splining myself I've already done a practice part here on my mill with a dividing head and uh, this was just a practice part but it does fit on there and uh, that is basically the next step once I mock the whole thing up in the car. Uh, one of the challenges is going to be getting the bump in the floor as far forward as possible so it clears the seats, right? And so I'm trying to keep this thing as short as possible. Like I said, this is actually currently an inch thick. I've since done some better analysis and it's going to get down to a half inch thick, which is good. Um, also, that affects then the bell housing. So this here is a bell housing you normally use with a Magnum XL. Um, this is a bell housing you normally use with a um, just a regular uh, Tremec uh, Magnum. 
and this is one from an 0304 Cobra. Now the Magnum and the 0304 Cobra are actually exactly the same height and depth, and the um, Magnum XL is actually uh, almost 860 thousandths or 0 .86 uh, inches or over three quarters of an inch deeper than these, um, which is also a quarter inch to a, uh, or so uh, deeper than a MT82 uh, or a GT500 transmission for that matter. For some reason the, the Magnum XL is extra deep, which would move everything back, which I don't want. So um, I am going to go with the regular Magnum bell housing, even though it's set up you know, normally for a clutch. It's got the little spot here for a clutch cable. That's not a big deal. I'll just have the, the uh, hoses come out of there for the hydraulic uh, throwout bearing. I may even, in the first generation here, use the aluminum 0304 Cobra one. Um, they are, it's almost 20 pounds difference. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and keep the thing a little bit lighter. Anyways, that's the basic plan for the uh, transmission and the transfer case. Um, I'll talk about the front differential in the uh, next video. Well, that's enough for this uh, first video. Um, I got a lot more information. I actually filmed a lot of stuff over the last two years. I might edit into some uh, some historical videos, if you will. Um, like I said, I'll go into more detail in the next next couple of videos on the front differential and the spindles. Um, I might actually, I do have some videos of the floor modifications. That might actually be the next one. But if you want to follow the build, um, normal YouTube, hit the like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see how often I make these. I'm hoping every week, but uh, we'll see uh, how, how that goes. But uh, I'm excited for the build. I hope you guys are too. And say, so if you want to watch, like and subscribe. Oh, and if you have any questions, that's what I was going to say, um, please post them and ask as many questions as you want and I'll try to answer them in the videos when it comes to uh, component selection, why I'm doing what, etc, etc. Uh, but thank you and we'll see you next time.